This is a generator. When I turn this, I'm taking mechanical energy and I'm turning that right there. Now, this is a one farad capacitor. In other words, I can store electrical energy in here. So, when I take the generator and I turn it, I'm now storing energy in the capacitor, which means when I let go, it becomes a motor. Remember, a, an electric generator and an electric motor are the same thing going in opposite directions. Okay? Right now, it's a motor. Generator, motor, generator, motor, generator, motor. That's what it is. Okay? This basic concept is one that is used quite often. I'll put it down here so I have fun. It crawls around. <laughs> We recently purchased a Prius. We're setting the scene for you here. You can see on our way to church. Janine's reading, Brian's reading. Um, uh, my wife's wondering why I'm videotaping. taping. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> it's important to set up the scene. So we have the scene set up. In the Prius, you have this, which is the energy monitor. We'll walk, we will walk our way through what you see here. First off, this is a monitor that shows you the gasoline engine. This is the electric engine, and this is the battery. And it shows you the various status of what various status status uh, statuses <laughs> of the things that are, that are going. Now, if you accelerate the car a lot, it needs to use both the uh, gasoline motor and the electric motor. Is what you can see right here. So right now, the gasoline motor and the electric motor are both. Uh, putting torque on the wheels. Now, if you were to take your foot off the pedal a little bit, you could see this. This is what happens when we actually don't need both the gasoline engine and the electric engine to power the car. So what's happening now? Part of the energy from the gasoline engine is doing what? Charging the battery. So what's happened to the electric motor? It's now a generator. It's no longer a motor. We've switched directions, right? So now, instead of being a motor, it's a generator. So we're now generating energy. We're taking some of the gasoline-powered uh, motor energy and converting that into electrical potential energy and storing that in the battery as chemical energy. And if you actually take your foot off the gas and you either put on your foot on the brakes or even if you just coast, you actually continue to, to convert mechanical energy into electrical potential energy, which is then stored as chemical energy in the battery. It's very brilliant. If you put your foot on the brake, rather than just converting all of that kinetic energy to uh, internal energy, as in heat, it instead uses a generator and generates energy, which is one of the reasons that you can get much better gas mileage with a Prius. And sometimes you can actually, uh, if you're not going uh, too fast, you can actually power the motor, or yeah, power the, uh, just the electric motor and cause the car to move. Just a simple explanation or a uh, walkthrough of a practical application of a generator slash motor. Now, we come back to this. What I want to look at now is I want to measure the current as a function of time. Because I want to talk about what's going on in this generator. In order to do so, I need to put in an ammeter class. When I put in the ammeter, do I put it in series or in parallel? Series. It goes in series. So I'm going to place the current sensor in the ammeter in series here. And we're going to be able to watch what goes on here. Now, a couple things. One thing to make sure that you see is that when I switch it from being a generator to a motor, the current changes directions. Do you see how the current is positive? The current is negative. The current is positive as a generator, it's negative as a motor. That's an important thing we're going to talk about in a minute, because one of the things you need to understand is why it keeps going in the same direction. Why it doesn't switch directions when I switch from a generator to a motor. Another thing to make sure that you understand is this. Why is it that when I take and I stop it, the current increases quite a bit, okay? So here it is. You can see I have a small current, but when I stop it, 
the current suddenly increases in magnitude and I have a much larger current. Why is it that when I stop the motor, I have a larger current? Jenkins. You're stalling. Yes, but why is it? What happens that causes it? John. Back EMF. I, do I have a back EMF now? No. Okay, so notice, when I just have it running as a motor, there is a back EMF and the current is small. When I stop that motor from running, the current increases because I no longer have a back EMF caused by that motor. And look at this curve. What is this right now? You should recognize this curve. <laughs> We've seen this specifically in this class in a lab that we have done. It's discharging a capacitor through a resistor right here because this motor has an internal resistance and I put energy into the capacitor and what you're looking at right here is discharging a capacitor through a resistor. Okay. Uh, one of the things I want to make sure that you understand is why the generator switches directions or I'm sorry, why the uh, generator does not switch directions when you go from a, um, from a generator to a motor. So here we go. As a generator, we'll look at it from a top view. We're going to just take and look at a simple loop. Let's say that the magnetic field is to the right. And initially, it looks like this. As a generator, we are turning it via some mechanical means. This is the top view. This is the front view. Okay. So initially, it looks like this. Okay. We are going to turn it such that it is, we're going to turn it this way such that it is finally turned like this. In other words, from the front view, I'm going to turn it like this. That's what a generator is. I'm turning it via some mechanical means. So it goes from here to here. This is our final. So in the top view, it's going to go from initial to final. Initial to final. Now, then we have, if it's a generator, we are inducing a current. So we need to walk through the change in the flux. Looking at it from the front view, what is the initial flux through this loop right here, Nick? Zero. Zero. There's no flux through this loop. When I turn it, suddenly we go, we go from having a magnetic flux equal to zero, zero lines going through this loop. That's what it looks like initially. Finally, we have a magnetic flux. That magnetic flux is directed which direction? Uh, Tyler, final. What's the direction of the magnetic field? To the right. Okay. And it's increasing. According to Lenz's law and the concept of electromagnetic, induct, uh, electromagnetic inertia, what is the direction of the induced magnetic field. The direction of the induced magnetic field. Um, Hillary. Um, to the left. To the left, right? It prevents, it tries to go against the change in the flux. So the induced magnetic field is to the left. Okay, so if the induced magnetic field is to the left, then we have current. An induced current. Now, the direction of the induced current. Well, the induced magnetic field is to the left. So if we take our fingers, we point our fingers in the direction of the induced magnetic field, it's going to be going this way on this loop. So on the top, that current is going to be going into, the current induced is going to be into the page. And on the bottom, that induced current is going to be out of the page. So in this view, that induced current would be in these two directions. Which means, in this view, the current would be going, uh, if it's into the page here, 
it's going to be going this way and this way. This is the direction of the induced current. Okay, that's as a generator. As a motor, again, we have our magnetic field. So it switches. We have our initial and our final. We have, bless you, the initial and the final. This is the, the top and the front field. So now, as a motor, we are, we are putting a current through it. Now remember, the current was in the opposite direction. So if the current is in the opposite direction, we know the current through the motor is going to look like this. It's opposite, in the opposite direction, which means in this view, that current is going to be in in the, and out, depending on which. If you notice, it's switched directions. Which means, if we take out our right hand, we point our fingers in the direction of current on this left wire, we curl our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, the force is going to be down on this one, <coughs> magnetic force. Here, the magnetic force, if you walk through it, is going to be in the opposite direction. And if you'll see, that causes a torque in the exact same direction as it was moving before. Because the current changes directions when you switch from being a generator to a 